preparing. We are live. Okay, awesome. Jimmy Sunway, greetings. On behalf of Save California Salmon, we would like to welcome you to our event today. So we are going to first start with a few announcements. I would like to start that uh, Chimmy Sunwee, my name is Morning Star Galley. I am Ajumawi Band of Pitt River. I am currently located on Nisanan, Miwok, and Maidu tribal lands. And so when we have been um, doing land acknowledgements on behalf of Save California Salmon, we are asking for people to, we are encouraging people to donate to local tribal efforts um, and to Save California Salmon. And so there will be links shared for both the Winnemum Wintu tribe and SCS. And those will be shared in the chat here. I'd like to share that during the last drought, California prioritized almond and alfalfa producers over salmon and killed over 90% of a winter run salmon within the Sacramento River and over 90% of juvenile salmon also died in the Klamath River. Now there are very few salmon and we are at a time again where we are facing impending fish kills. Emergency flows from the Trinity River did not stop an adult fish kill in the Klamath during the last drought. However, if the state and feds do not protect reservoirs, that might not happen. We cannot let the salmon die again, and they are now facing extinction. Please visit CaliforniaWaterJustice.org for more information and action alerts on how to get involved. A petition to the governor and water board are available at change.org slash water justice. We are inviting you to participate in a day of action that we will be holding on May 4th in Sacramento, California at the California State Capitol. We will comment to the California Water Board at 9 a.m., rally at the California State Capitol at noon, and there will be an online rally and Twitter call to action to storm the governor's office at 1 p.m. for that online event. There are public meetings about the state climate change proposals and the Delta tunnels over the next couple of weeks on Zoom. Please follow our social medias, our social media channels for updates and event announcements. We just announced the California Water Protectors and Youth Protectors social media challenges today. Please check out the announcements on our social media. Please also check out the Advocacy and Water Protectors curriculum and current TEK science and management webinar series. The next one is on the Bay Delta and estuaries this Friday at 11 a.m. Our free curriculum and links to our webinars are available at californiasalmon.org and will be posted on our Facebook pages. You can also donate at these links that are being shared out at this time. Again, on behalf of Save California Salmon, we welcome you and are glad to have you participating in our event for today. Thank you. And so now we would like to announce um, an address um, that's by video from Senator Jarrett Huffman, who is currently in DC um, and was able not able to call in. He did send this video statement. No sound. You are muted, Pua. Hi, everyone. Congressman Jared Huffman here. Thanks so much for letting me beam into your event to offer my thoughts on our current severe California drought and what that means for our salmon populations. As you all know very well, climate change is pushing us and our precious salmon stocks to the brink. Even if farmers, fishermen, tribes, and agencies were to do everything right, we'd still have some tough times ahead this year. There's just so little water to go around. Juvenile fish on the Klamath River are already feeling the strain of disease, and it's unclear how returning adult fish are going to fare this fall. 
while options are limited, the state is looking to truck hatchery fish from the Sacramento River to the estuary to avoid deadly conditions uh, in the Delta. California salmon fishermen have gotten the bad news that fishing will be severely curtailed this year, and the Yurok tribe will once again not have a commercial salmon season. That's the seventh year in a row. There's not that much that we can do in the face of such extreme drought, but we need to and can do some things that steer salmon away from a course of extinction. We have a fantastic new Interior Department Secretary, Deb Holland. I've worked closely with her in the House of Representatives. She's a fierce champion for the environment and for wildlife, and I know that she will take these issues seriously. Secretary Holland has already gotten to work quickly by rescinding Trump era water orders on the Klamath and Sacramento that would have been disastrous during this drought. I'm gonna be asking her to appoint a Klamath czar, a high level operative who can make quick and important decisions as we navigate this year and the coming seasons. I'm also going to convene an emergency drought summit to look at all the different measures that we can take that might just make a little bit of difference for our fish. You can expect more news about that soon. I'm also looking at other ways to provide equitable relief to tribes who rely on salmon, but often find themselves waiting years for relief while farmers and others are compensated for uh, lost production immediately. The truth is everyone's gonna have to buckle down this year. There's no way around it. No one is gonna come through unscathed. But I do believe if we work together, we can make a difference and get through this tough time. The networks that all of you folks have developed over the years are going to be more valuable than ever. So please keep doing that great work, whether it is in the river, in the courts, in your tribal communities, or in the press. Speak up and make sure policymakers know that threatening salmon with extinction is not acceptable. I'll be there to back you up every step of the way. Thanks for what you do. Let's resolve to get through this together and ensure a way forward for California salmon. Thank you to Congressman, Congressman Huffman for that announcement. If you are just tuning in, you are watching the State of the California Salmon event that's hosted by Save California Salmon. And I'm now turning this over to Regina Chikazola. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. Um, and we, I, my name is Regina Chikazola. I work with Save California Salmon and I live here on Karuk territory in Orleans, California. Um, and I'm really excited to introduce our um, speaker, Amy Cordalis is a Yurok tribal member and an attorney for the tribe. And she is also principal of the organization Ridges, uh, Riffles to Ridges. So thank you so much for being here today, Amy. And um, please feel free to elaborate on your introduction. <laughs> thank you, Regina. Um, thank you all for having me here today. Um, I also am on the most southern edge of Yurok's Aboriginal territory just below Moonstone Beach. Uh, so happy to be here. Ayakui, uh, Neknau Amy Cordalis, Nuwak Rekwoi, Numatewa Waklao. It's a real pleasure to be with you this evening um, to talk about salmon, you know, which are at the core of um, the work that I do and um, things I think about and the way that I want to live my life. Um, I, as Regina said, I am uh, an attorney. I um, represent the Yurok tribe on uh, several issues related to the Klamath River. But I came to this work because um, I'm a fishing person and I've always been a fishing person. And I, um, you know, spent a lot of time on the river fishing for salmon and you know, my family history um, includes fighting for Klamath River salmon with our blood, sweat, and tears. And it's just a real honor to be able to continue that family legacy. And, you know, I always say that the previous generation's fight was just for the right to fish. And, you know, for better or worse, 
our generation's right is for, or our generation's fight is for conservation of the resource, the fish necessary to exercise the right. And I think that's really relevant to where we are right now. The state of the salmon on the Klamath River has never been worse. It's, you know, our salmon are in the poorest condition they've ever been in. And, you know, that's, that's hard as a tribal person to even say and to even acknowledge because, you know, that, that hurts us to our core. Um, many people know that the Klamath River was once the third largest salmon producing river in the whole West. And, you know, as a, a, a being from a family from the mouth of the Klamath River that always fished those exact fish, you know, we had, we had it good back in the day. And so now it's, it's very hard to acknowledge that, um, you know, there's hardly any fish left. And in fact, there's about five to 10% of the historic size of the runs left in the Klamath River. Um, you know, we had all kinds of, we had different runs of fish and there's really only about five to 10% of those fish left. So it's really a hard time. There's reasons why, you know, we're, we're down to that small number of fish. You know, the dams had huge impacts on that, the development of the Klamath Reclamation Project, how it diverts water out of the river. But what really it comes down to now is that the whole river is sick, right? Um, you know, it's not just fish, it's not just steelhead, it's not just sturgeon, it's not just water quality. The whole river is sick. And it's sick because the way that you know the United States has developed use uh, on the Klamath is to support these consumptive uses, you know, and to support things that result in the water being polluted, um, you know, the the and not much water being in there, and so habitats bad, water quality is bad, and it just makes the whole river sick. How that's manifesting in terms of current conditions is, as we heard. Congressman Huffman speaking earlier, we're in a historic drought. It is the worst drought in history. The inflow into Upper Klamath Lake, which determines how much goes down into the Klamath River, is the lowest on record. So, you know, even if, if we could manage the river to where there were no agricultural deliveries this year, there isn't enough water in the system to protect coho salmon, Chinook salmon, um, there's just not. And so what that means is we're in a very high risk year of losing all of what I call our baby salmon or out migrating salmon to fish disease. Um, in the last four or five years, a fish disease called sea shasta has been you know, killing what I said earlier, our baby salmon about a range from anywhere from about 70% to about 95% of our baby salmon in each of the last five years have been killed because of this um, fish disease called sea shasta. Um, last year, we were able to avoid a massive fish kill by sending water down the river that flushed out the fish disease. But this year, because of the drought, that's not an option. And so I'm really pleased to hear that Congressman Huffman is organizing an emergency fish disease uh, a meeting and that I think he's gonna do that very soon so that we can get the, you know, the three sovereigns in the room, the tribes, the states, the feds in the same room to talk about what are we going to do as co-managers of the whole basin to protect these fish. Um, and I don't anticipate that we're gonna, you know, be able to protect all the fish, um, but we'll at least try. And I think that's the best we can do for this immediate year. Um, you know, I think looking forward, we really have an obligation to change how we manage things in the Klamath Basin the status quo, you know, the, the, the diverting of water, the polluting of water, 
um, the use of the whole basin as a um, you know sort of economy isn't working and we have to change our practices to make it so that we are supporting the ecological functions of the basin as a whole we've got to you know remove those dams which are scheduled to come out in 2023 uh, we've got to get more water in the river in a way that reflects the natural hydrograph so that we can replicate and once again build a home for salmon that looks something like the home that they evolved in. Um, because right now we are, um, <laughs> you know, way out of whack with the natural word or world for lack of a better way of saying it. So um, you know, really concerned about things. Our salmon are extremely stressed. You know, the allocation that the tribe's gotten over the last few years has been the smallest on record because the returning runs have been the smallest on record. This year, we're getting an allocation at Yurok of about 6,500 salmon. That's not even enough salmon for every one of our tribal members to have one salmon. You know, and, and that's um, just for context, you know, it used to be estimated that there was anywhere from 500,000 to a million salmon that returned to the river every year. You know, so for us to, to be down to an allocation of 6,500 fish just tells you and really points out how dire things are. So, you know, it's, it's likely our, our commercial fishery will be canceled. Um, you know, and, the, and that has real impact to our community. We're already in a stressed, hard situation. So, you know, I, I guess I just go back to, I, I think Congressman Huffman said it well when, you know, he pointed out that we've got to get through this year. I think we organize what we can between the three sovereigns in terms of a fish disease mitigation plan for this year. But we also need to really look forward to how do we solve long-term you know, problems? How do we bring solutions? How do we bring sustainability back to the basin? You know, and on a final note, I, I wanna say, you know, from, from Yurok's perspective, it's always been about balance. It's always been about balance between the humans and the natural world. And since colonization, that balance has been so thrown out of whack. And that's a big part as to why we're here. That's a big part as to why we are, you know, on the verge of ecological collapse, because we've used the basin in a way that was not sustainable. We used it just to consume and to take and to take and to take. And that is unsustainable, that's unhealthy. And so now things are out of balance. So from a Yurok worldview, what, what our obligation to our creator is, is to bring back that balance, you know, to, to make it more right. And that means sort of returning the system to what it used to look like and making things healthy again. So that's what we're going to be working on. I invite all of you to join us in that effort. Um, I am hopeful that in this administration, with a with a new day, with the you know racial equity movements going on, um, that we can make progress. And um, I look forward to working with every single one of you on this um, webinar, and you know toward that goal. So. I, Thank you, Wak Lao, um, and I, I look forward to any kind of uh, questions anybody may have. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Um, and so because of a scheduling, a scheduling change, um, John McManus from the Golden State Salmon Association has to leave at six o'clock. Um, so he's going to speak now, um, and then we'll have Kaleen Sisk with the Winnemowintu tribe, um, and then also we we'll, might have more information on the salmon runs this year from the fishermen's perspective. Hi, Regina. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, John. Okay. I'm with the Golden State Salmon Association. My name is John McManus. We represent sport, 
and commercial salmon fishermen and women and related industries and businesses. We're looking at a drastically reduced fishing season out on the ocean this year. Uh, on the commercial side, it looks like about 60% of the season will be cut. On the recreational side, for most of the state, about 50% will be cut. The primary reason has to do with the shortage of Klamath River fish that are out in the ocean and um, a strong interest and commitment into reducing our interactions with those fish. But even if there was not a shortage of Klamath River fish, we would still be looking at reduced seasons this year because there is a shortage of Sacramento River fish, which is the main salmon that our industry relies on. In both instances, salmon are in short numbers because there's not enough water in the freshwater system to keep healthy populations. Water managers have hard decisions to make. Many people lay claim to the water, but historically, all of us who care about salmon have been last in line when water allocation decisions are being made. Sometimes I think it may be because we don't write big enough campaign finance checks and other people do. I don't know that for sure, but it doesn't feel good. And we're in a world of hurt this year, as are many others who rely on salmon up and down the state. They're native species. We believe they have every right to exist here in the state of California. People may have heard, and if you haven't, you may see in the news tomorrow that the state of California will be trucking many of the Central Valley hatchery salmon from hatchery sites in the Central Valley down to the bay for release there, San Francisco Bay, where they are expected to survive at much higher numbers than if they were released into the river. Um, this may help our industry in the short term, and it may help hatchery salmon, but it doesn't do anything for the wild salmon, the juveniles, the three and four inch long salmon that are in the river systems right now dying to get out. Most will not make it. The rivers are too low, they're too warm, uh, which gives predators the upper hand and we lose these juvenile salmon. One thing about juvenile salmon is, uh, believe it or not, they're not very good swimmers. They've evolved in nature to get flushed out of the rivers of their birth in the springtime when snow melts and runoff normally carries them on a conveyor belt of water from the freshwater systems out to the ocean. But that conveyor belt is badly hurt both in the Sacramento River and in the Klamath River this year. Water managers, both with the state and federal government, can affect the outcome here. They control the water that's held behind dams in reservoirs. But unfortunately, so far, the decisions that we see are that water release decisions from reservoir quantities of water are not being made with the best salmon uh, outcomes in mind. So that's the main thing that I want to share, and I will stop there, Regina. Thank you very much. Thank you to John McManus for those joining us. We are hosting the State of the Salmon event on behalf of Save California Salmon. We have heard from Amy Cordellis, who is a Yurok tribal member and attorney, principal of Ridges to Riffles. We have heard from John McManus, and we will now be turning it over to Chief Kellyn Sisk of the Winnemum One Two. Thank you, Kellyn. It's an honor to have you on with us today, as it always is. Thank you, thank you. Um, first, I would like to just kind of uh, have us kind of make an offering to the water. And you no, know, um, we always kind of start things out by acknowledging some of the some of those uh, spirit beings that really have the power. They have they have they've got the decisions to make for us. And so, you know, I'm I'm just kind of burning some root here because of what has been said already. You know, it's like. Um, we're just the little people, right? And the little people have been making the wrong decisions for a long time. 
without without remorse. And so, um, you know, I'm I'm just praying for this water and saying that, you know, we want to do better. We want to we want to uh, make things better for all of the the things around us. You know, the salmon have our eye right now, and they should have had our eye for the last thirty years. You know, and even longer than that. And so I just want to put that um, that water in our minds and in our hearts and and uh, whatever things that you know you you hold valuable as far as the indigenous ways of thinking, the indigenous ways of of doing things that call out um, for the creator to help us. You know, help us help the white men make better decisions. That's what I'm praying for. You know, we have been trying to bring back the New Zealand salmon that was sent over there from our river for over 10 years. For over 10 years, we've been trying to bring them back. We have now just got to the level of the state and federal agencies that grant the fine permits for importing out of country species. And it doesn't matter that they were here and they're over there now, but their home waters are here. So they're gonna be treated as an, a new incoming species um, <laughs> that you know, they're, they're uh, looking at as maybe having diseases. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, listening to this, and I know already that our salmon are so diseased from the hatchery system and in the, in the warm water system that we have, do I want to bring those New Zealand salmon that are swimming in cold waters in the South Island from um, Iraqi waters, glacier waters, to here? Will they survive? Can they, can they do that here? I mean, there's, there's really not a, this is not a really good homecoming water system that, you know, we're going to bring them back to. But it's, it's just that, you know, it's like it's taken 10 years. A lot of people have passed away since then, both in New Zealand and here, that wanted to see those salmon swimming in our waters. And I think that, you know, um, people didn't know a lot of things about salmon and that they didn't recognize that California really is a salmon state. It's a salmon state. It's not a GMO farming state. We never should have been that, and we never should have diverted our water to do that. And now if we really look at it, uh, farming only produces 2% of California's economic budget. That's what, they only put 2% in for California being the fifth largest economy in the world. Yet they use 80% of the waters. Why does that make sense? Why does that make sense to anybody? You know, it's, it's, it's a backward support system that they have going on. And then they think they're giving up something to give to the salmon. When in fact, Californians should support us becoming a salmon state again. You know, it was when they put in the Delta system that started all of this fish kill. And if you want to talk about fish kills, McLeod yes. River fish kills in 1943 yes. to 1950 were atrocious. It was every salmon that would have swam back to the McLeod died at the dam. No one talks about that. But you know what effect that had on the ocean? And now that we're continuing that destructive behavior on the rest of the Sacramento River, and the Pitt River was blocked, the Sacramento River was blocked, and the McLeod River is blocked. All of those fish that would have been hatched on those rivers were absent. They became absent in the ocean. And now from Shasta Dam to the ocean, we have all of this other havoc that they can't hardly survive. We have too many invasive species. You know, nobody, I guess nobody cared about invasive species then, but they certainly want to throw that out when we're trying to bring salmon back that's from here. But um, the invasive species are canopying the whole river system. They're, they're like a big canopy over all of the willow. They're all up in the cottonwood trees. They're killing the cottonwood trees. These giant trees are falling in the river. 
and which affects the salmon's um, migration and habitat and, and food sources. And so the, um, the issues that we face is that um, we should have more of our uh, control over our waterways. You know, I look at the water systems um, and they, they list from 1957 on all of these companies and, and departments and stuff. And I'm thinking, well, where was the tribes? Where is the tribes on that to help guide what happens on these rivers? There are no tribes on any of those things. And we have a hard time. Um, we, have, we even have a harder time because we're the unrecognized. You know, it's like, I still don't know how California ever came up with unrecognized Indians when we had a claims case and we all um, certified under the BIA and, and the federal government, yet we're un, unrecognized. And it seems like our salmon from New Zealand are unrecognized too. They, uh, but just think what it could do in bringing those salmon back and getting that river system back, what it would do for the ocean. Because not only are we doing without salmon, but the whales are dying like crazy and the orcas and the sea lions, they're starving out there because there are not enough salmon going back out to sea. And while it's like, all the time the hatchery system is not the answer to any of this. It's the prolonging of the final death of this. It's not the resurrection, it's not the restoration, it's not the one that's going to turn things around because every salmon that they give a ride to the ocean is not never coming back. And so it doesn't really help save those salmon or help the spawning. But also I wanted to just toss out there too about the drought and the way that we have handled the wildfires, the way that the Forest Service has handled the restoration of wildfire areas. And uh, you know the BOR and the BLM and all of those guys, it's like they are cutting trees like they've been given a gift from God or something. And they can go in there and just clear cut. They have the they have the permission to cut thirty inch round trees, falling them without any awareness of the hyd hydrology system that exists in the forest. The hydrology system of these giant trees that bring up water from the deeper sources of of the of the land, and it's like the sources that feed the little trees that have tiny little roots. Those trees bring that up. And when we just go through there like crazy people, like, oh yeah, wildfires are, they're killing everything without regard to the water banks of the state are those <laughs> mountains, those sacred mountains, they're the water banks. And what holds that together is those trees. <laughs> the water bank doesn't wash away because the trees help out in protecting it and bringing up the water in the sources of a sponge and divvying out the water in, in a way that the little birds, the little ants, the little grasshoppers, they all get water even if it doesn't rain. You know, but we're destroying that system too. We're not putting any money in it. Nobody has a job that's called restoring a waterway in the mountains. And we should, we should Mom, have jobs. Have yep. No protectors. <laughs> she's, she's a water protector. <laughs> and so the idea here is that a multiple of, of issues need to be happening, you know, and, and we have realized that uh, 10 years ago in, in that it's not, an, it's not enough for us to continue to go to the spring and sing to this water as always, as our tribe always did and still does. But it's not enough. That spring went dry three times already in the last 10 years. That was the opening. We have been on this 
You know, this is not like all of a sudden a drought appeared. We have been working towards getting this drought and making sure that it happens because we're so blinded by all the other things that are needed in Mother Earth for the flowers to grow, for the birds to, to be here. And instead, it's all about capitalism. It's all about how much money people can make, how fast they can make it. And they don't really care about the rest of it, you know, but it's going to catch up with us. Like my grams always says, you know, um, Mother Earth will shake us off like fleas off a dog. And then she'll bloom again. And things will be good again when she puts a stop to what people are doing because they're not doing the jobs they were given to do here. So we have to really turn things around, you know, and we do have the, the Run for Salmon um, project that we hope to open the eyes of people to, to realize it's more than just we're not just talking about a fingerling fish, you know, opposed to food for America in the in the GMO farming. We're talking about the um, the existence of California. We're talking about the existence of all people in California, not just the tribes. But we're talking about you know how we need a paradigm shift. We need a paradigm shift to create the jobs that help, like what we used to do. The tribal people used to go out and, and pick and propagate the land and, and along the shores. They used to take the willows. All of that has to do with the preservation of the water systems, not just because, oh, yeah, they just needed it. It's like it is in balance with what cycles of life that come through. You know, and that's, I think about that when they say, well, instead of hydropower, we'll go, um, we'll go um, solar. And I'm thinking, if anything you do that goes mega power is horrible for nature. It's like, we are a flyway. The birds bring seeds, they scatter them out, they grow our forest so that we know what's going on, so that we have seeds, we have food. But with solar power and the mega, mega processes, just like those turbines that are up in Pit River, I could see them every day when I drive home and I'm thinking what a, ma a major mistake that was because it also changed the clouds and the watering system of this area. It has a wind power that blows out um, things that were not there before. And so the winds and the rains, the snow clouds, just they're, they're not the same anymore. I mean, you, you need a science scientist to study that, I suppose. But people who have lived here all our lives, we already see it. We already know that is a problem. Will they take it down? No, no, they won't take it down because it's been, been permitted. You know, it's, it's like the Delta. Will they take that pumping station out that's killing all those salmon in five months time? No, they won't take that out. They're spending billions to rehab the Delta but moving that particular pump that's killing salmon, we should all just come together and say that. You know, we're, we're not gonna approve anything on the Delta unless that pumping station is certainly moved. So anyway, <laughs> I have a lot of things on my mind about these things because, you know, we're working on getting our salmon back. And I think that every river affects all of the salmon and you know I, I spent a little time talking to Billy Frank Jr. a little bit and he was in charge of seven, seven, um, 700 miles of the Pacific coast for salmon and every tributary every estuary was a like a, a it was the the crux of salmon throughout that ocean area and, you know, we're down here almost um, to the last, you know, San Francisco Bay as the farthest south the salmon are going. But we also know that the salmon swim all the way to San Diego when they come out of the bay to meet the whales. And the whales are calving, you know, in June, July, August, 
all the way up until October when the humpbacks come through. And those salmon swim down there to feed them. Now there isn't enough of those salmon. There's not enough on the river, right? The Karuks ain't got enough. Uh, we certainly don't have any on our river. So we're, we've been subject to getting salmon from the Karuks and the Yurok's and the Hoopas for a long time because our river, the Sacramento River, nobody fishes there no more because it's already pretty much ruined. I don't know anybody who wants to fish except for the, you know, the non-Indians, they fish there, but Indian tribes, we don't fish on the river no more. So anyway, uh, I think that's where I'll end it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you to Chief Colleen Sisk of the Winnemum Win 2. We are now going to go back to Regina Chigazola, Director of Save California Salmon. Thank you both to Colleen and Regina. Thank you so much, Colleen. That was really great. Um, and I actually do have um, a little bit of a presentation because I wanted to talk a little bit about so we know the salmon are um, not doing well. We know that people are fighting really hard for them, but um, they're, the situation's getting worse. And so I um, have a presentation about the day of action that we have planned um, and a presentation that just shows how the numbers are going down very quickly. Um, I know everyone who fishes knows this, but um, for people who don't fish, um, the situation is very extreme and we're looking at losing most of the runs of sand beyond um, the hatchery fall run. Um, and so, and it used to be that there were a lot of different runs of salmon. There were sturgeon, there were eel, um, there were candlefish, and it, they were very much a lot of them everywhere. And so there was always, always food to eat, but now there's not. So I'm going to try to share my screen and I do have um, a couple videos. So if they don't show, I might see if someone else can show them because I do have slow internet where I live, which I apologize for. And it's just going to take me one second to get my presentation. Um, okay, well, thank you. So first of all, as you all know, um, we are at of the salmon event and um, I'm really happy that Jarrett Huffman was able to call um, send a video in he is in DC right now trying to work on these issues and we are lucky that we do have a good senator working with us um, so thank you everyone for being here tonight um, so I just wanted to show for people who might not talking about um, you can see that the Klamath River comes from Oregon, comes through Oregon, and where there is a tie-in between the Klamath River and the Sacramento River and the Bay Delta all the way to the San Francisco Bay is through a diversion through the Trinity River, into the Sacramento River near the Shasta Dam. Um, and that diversion um, takes a lot of the water out of the Klam lower Klamath River. It used to be up to 80%, but um, due to the Hoopa Valley and Yurok tribes and other people, including people who are on this call, um, fighting really hard for the fish, we now have about 50% of the Trini River water that goes into the system. But in years of severe drought like this, there is not really protections for carryover storage in the Trini River system. Um, and we do rely on that Trinity River water to be released into the Klamath River to stop large scale adult fish kills. Um, as Amy said, the juvenile fish do die um, most years in the Klamath River where it's not good water years due to Klamath dams and low flows. Um, but in, as a lot of you know, in 2001, we did have an adult fish kill in the Klamath River, which was really devastating on um, and so I just wanted to show the red dots in this slide are dams uh, in California. Um, and as you can see, the water from the Bay Delta, which includes Trinity River water, goes all the way down to um, areas such as LA. Um, and what I, why I think it's really important for people to see that 
that the water quality within the Bay Delta system impacts the drinking water for the most of the state. And so while agriculture takes 80% of the water, developed water in California, um, the cities are seem to do are trying to save water. And I really encourage anyone in the cities to do everything to save water. Um, but if agriculture takes too much water and puts in too much, um, puts back in too much chemical releases that um, from runoff, then we don't have good drinking water in the cities either. And so by the state not protecting um, the carryover storage in the Trinity, the Shasta, all the dams throughout the Sierra system, um, that is actually threatening everyone's water within California that gets water from the state and federal water systems. Um, I don't really need to go too into this slide, but a lot of the areas that we're talking about here are part of the federal water project. There's a state and federal water project, and the water project more so is used to grow large-scale agriculture. Um, and so, um, and that's where the big dams of some of the really cold water within the areas that I live and um, Colleen and Amy live are, I, as far as the Trinity River. Um, so also I wanted to go into the Klamath River system for those who might not realize where it is. We've gotten a lot of calls from people who don't. Um, and so, as I said, the Trinity is diverted into the Sacramento system, but in the Klamath, there's a lot of agriculture in the upper basin. And uh, some of it is in historic wildlife refuges. And um, a lot of area was drained and that's really, that was wildlife refuges and wetlands. And that's really impacted water quality within the river systems. And that's really impacted the fish too as has the four dams in the Klamath system that we are going to get taken out. Um, and so I have this slide here to just show how dire the situation is. I was asked when, oh, you claim that the salmon are going extinct all the time. Why is it so different this year? Um, and if you look at this, this is the landings. So this is what commercial fishermen were catching. You can see that we're way down as far as what salmon that people have to catch. And this is um, commercial fishing, recreational fishing, and trout that are not getting much salmon any longer. I'm having trouble getting to my next slide. Oh, there it is. Um, so this is actually a slide that um, was provided by the San Francisco Baykeeper um, and NRDC, and it shows where the Sacramento runs, what we're dealing with in the Sacramento system. And as you can see, Winter Run, which is the one that um, Chief Sisk is trying to get back above the Shasta Dam, and which has been ordered by the federal government to get back to the uh, above the Shasta Dam, um, are nearly extinct. And um, the Delta smelts are almost functionally extinct. They're finding no more uh, over the last couple of years. Um, and these salmon and the Delta smelt, they're canaries in the coal mine. I mean, if you, if they can't survive in the system and this is going into your drinking water supply, then you have something to worry about. I work on water quality plans in the Sacramento and Bay Delta and the amount of chemicals and salts and pollution coming into the system is scary. And the toxic algae that's being produced from the diversions and the chemicals and nutrients is scary because it's going into the drinking water water system and that is not providing fishable and um, drinkable water. Um, so I believe this is actually, uh, let me make sure, yeah, this is a slide of the Klamath River um, salmon escapements. Um, and as you can see, it's going down quickly. And um, one thing I would like to mention is last year, there was a lot less um, salmon than were predicted in the Klamath River. I personally um, know a lot of tribal fish a lot of commercial fishermen and almost no one caught anything last year. So I would say the 2020 number is actually much lower than what shows there. And we're seeing more and more emaciated and really small fish. Um, and they don't have good food sources. They're being impacted by drought and climate change, but also the water diversions are whole, whole river systems are being diverted to the point of being completely dry in the Klamath River system. And I know the same is true in the Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what does salmon mean for people? I mean, for a lot of people, it, it means whether or not their mental health and physical 
good or not, you know, whether or not they, people, um, the suicide rates go up, whether or not people get diabetes and heart disease, at least within um, the communities where I live in. Um, so it's just really important for people to realize that this isn't a severe environmental justice and social justice issue for the state of California. It's not just so whole cultures that are being impacted as um, Amy and Kathleen were able to tell us more about. This is a picture of the Klamath River fish kill where over 60,000 fish died in the river because of a decision to give water to farmers instead of fish. Um, and this could happen again in water for releases in years like this. So it's really important that we get the Trump water plan um, thrown out and then we start looking at these river systems and what are the needs of them. So um, I wanted to talk about what do you do? What can we do? I would say action, community organizing and people coming together works. Um, we've seen it in the Klamath River when Warren Buffett tried to say maybe he wouldn't remove the Klamath dams after 20 years of community action. Um, we did a day of action. Um, there was the um, Yurok tribe and Karuk tribes and other tribes Warren Buffett. There was lawsuits throughout the whole time. Every single tool was important. The artists, um, the songs, everything, the, the people who participated, we won and we're going to get those dams down. Um, and hopefully we'll get them down really soon, but it happened because people came together and worked. Um, and the threats, um, this is actually um, an old graphic provided from the Winnemowin Two tribe, thank you. But um, the threats are overwhelming. There's a proposal to raise the Shasta River Dam, there's the Trump water plan, state water plans, there's plans, Governor Newsom said that a drought solution of the site's reservoir, which could dewater the Trini River and Sacramento systems more than they already are. There's a plan to build the Delta Tunnel, you know, there's permanent contracts for water users, which hopefully will be thrown out in court. And then there's lots of dam relicensing and water quality, water quality control plants, which could put more water in the river. But unfortunately, Governor Newsom is holding up some of those updates right now. So we're really asking Governor Newsom to start doing a better job. Um, and so this is just a picture to show that um, there are a lot of different things that can happen. And this is a picture of the run for salmon. And it, when the tr uh, people from the Klamath and Trinity River ran to meet Kalim at the Shasta Dam on the run for salmon to um, show that the Trinity River water is taken out of the Klamath through that diversion. And I encourage anyone who can to participate and to help out with the run for salmon. Um, and then there's, we've taken a lot of actions as far as um, rallies. The Hoopa High School Water Protectors Club and tribes were able to go to Sacramento and demand a meeting in the North State that tribal members could engage in over the Delta Tunnels. And over 200 people from at least seven different tribes came to that meeting. And that only happened because of kids and um, people like Kalin went to, a, went to a meeting for the Department of Water Resources of California and demanded it. So um, it does make a difference when you ask for, for change. But um, unfortunately, you have to ask pretty loudly. <laughs> um, and this is a picture of that rally. And this is a picture of the Hi Hoopa High School Waters Protectors Club, um, along with um, the Lowry family. So thank you all so much for the work to make that happen. Um, and hopefully my video will work.
Um, and so I just wanted to show, play that slide to show what this is all about. Safe California Salmon is um, works really hard to provide curriculum on these issues and our curriculums are free and anyone can download them who would like to. But we encourage people to adapt our curriculums for your local areas. What are your local tribes doing to protect the water systems where you're at? Um, you know, and work with local leaders and make sure that your issues are being dealt with um, in a really respectful way. Um, so yeah, when we do um, trainings for teachers who would like to do work on this curriculum. Um, and then I have one more video and then I will finish up with um, just uh, showing a flyer for the day of action. Governor Newsom, my county and my community are and not drain our river and not make a big mistake. Whatever happens to salmon happens to us. And if we don't take care of them, we Well, unfortunately, it's too slow to show that, but you can see it at California Water Justice or go to our Twitter page, um, California Salmon, and it'll be on there. But um, it's just really important to watch to see um, what the water should look like and how much salmon, how much salmon means to people. Uh, Let's see, and um, sorry about that. I just have two slides left. Um, what, we wanted to um, say tonight that we are doing a water protectors challenge and there are lots of different, we need everyone who can be involved to be involved, no matter what you do. If you write songs, if you make videos, TikToks, we encourage everyone to participate. Um, and then please participate in the day of action for California Salmon. Um, there will be a rally at the Capitol uh, at noon on May 4th. Um, on the South Lawn. There will be calling into the water board meeting that day for public comment at nine o'clock asking for the water board to take action to put water in the rivers. They have that ability, especially on the Sacramento River system and on the Scott and Shasta rivers, which are tributaries to the Klamath. Um, and then also there will be an online rally at one o'clock. And so with that, I would like to be able to do a little bit of question and answer before we quit. Um, and I know that Morningstar might have to leave, but um, my um, sharing and then exit full screen. And then I also wanted to make sure if um, Barry Nelson had anything to wrap up on with as far as impacts to fishermen from this year's salmon season that he could say something and then we'll do question and answer. So thank you so much for everyone. Please participate in the day of action. Please go to change.org backslash water justice and sign the petition to Governor Newsom asking him to provide water for salmon um, or, and go to californiawaterjustice.org to find out more and to watch the videos that my internet would not let me show you. Thank you. Thanks, Regina. Uh, Barry Nelson here with uh, Golden State Salmon Association picking up for John. I, I, I thank you for uh, holding this event, Regina, and thank all of you for speaking and for uh, being being such a critical part of this fight. The, the fishermen stand shoulder to shoulder with you in this fight. Um, um, I The only thing I would add is you've, you've hit all the high points, all the key points. Um, you know, the, 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 this fight is why literally why uh, GSSA exists. Just wanted to, uh, to point out that we were formed just over a decade ago following the 2008-2009 uh, shutdown of, of commercial and recreational fishing in the state. We know we're in a fight literally for the survival of the fishing industry for the economic benefits of that issue, it, that industry as well as for the, 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 the tribal benefits as well. Um, and you've touched on sort of the key forums and I'll just highlight three of those key drought related forums. There are a lot of things we're all doing to protect salmon, but the three that we have our eye on are temperature protections. That's a decision the state water board will make in the next few weeks. Uh, and thank those of you who participated in, in the state board's workshop uh, uh, a week ago. Thank you for that. Uh, the second is the, the state board's process for setting new Bay Delta standards. Um, that process has been ongoing. The current standards are 25 years old. The process has been going on for about a decade. Uh, and frankly, the governor has largely shut that process down for the last, um, uh, for the last two years. 
in support of what he's calling voluntary agreements, although the NGO and tribal communities right now are frozen out of those discussions. Uh, and the last one you touched on as well, and that is the, uh, the, the need to uh, throw out the uh, Trump administration's, what we call the extinction plan for uh, salmon in the Central Valley uh, and replace those with real science-based protections. So that's, those are the big decision makers there, the state water board, the governor, and the new secretary of the interior, as well as uh, the secretary of commerce for um, for the salmon biological opinion. So you've you've nailed nailed I think the the key issues, and we're happy to work with you on next steps. Thank you so much, Barry. And I think it's just really important that. Um, Fishermen and tribes throughout the state are coming together um, with a unified voice right now and saying that we need water in our rivers. I mean, during these droughts and during this time that all these baby salmon and young salmon and adult salmon have um, been dying or not coming back, um, we've seen the almond, uh, the planting of almonds expand huge amount in areas where there is no water and water has to be taken from and diverted really far in order to bring them there. And permanent crops use more water than um, annual crops. And so while we're talking about climate change and drought and preserving forests um, in order to deal with things like climate change, the 30 by 30 plan from the Newsom administration, we're also seeing more and more permanent crop water being planted. So um, I just urge everyone to um, sign the petition and use your voice. Um, so we do have some questions. If anyone has questions, please drop them in the chat. We can go maybe 10 or 15 minutes longer, but I know a lot of people do have to leave because it's the evening and we all have families. Um, so the first question, is can, hey everyone, can you explain why the governor only declared a drought for two counties and what was that strategy about in your opinion? Um, and I don't know, um, one thing is Amy Cordalis did have to leave. So if there's Klamath specific questions, I can help field those. But Barry or Colleen, Barry, do you have something to say about that? About the, on the Bay Delta side, I can't speak to the, the Klamath and Trinity side, but on the Bay Delta side, frankly, we've been concerned about a drought declaration because the way, what, what we saw back in 2014 and 2015 was just routine waiving of standards to protect salmon and the ecosystem. Uh, those are called temporary urgency change petitions. The way the process works, the state water board practically can only weaken standards if the governor declares a drought emergency. So frankly, we haven't been eager to see a drought declaration because it sets the stage potentially for um, weakening standards. It's hard to imagine weakening standards when salmon and other fish species are in such terrible shape, but that's a very real risk. And we saw a lot of that in the last drought. Um, uh, and just today, we heard a, a rumor, I'm not sure how reliable it is yet, um, that there's growing pressure uh, to do that again. So the disasters we saw in 2014 and 2015, there's growing pressure to do that again. The wave standards that would, if anything, it's hard to imagine, um, make the situation in the Bay Delta system even worse. So we're not, we haven't been eager on the Central Valley side to see a drought declaration because of that risk. Yeah, I, I just like to add to that, too, by saying that, you know, there's more water being transported to Southern California to fill reservoirs at this time in the Sacramento River and making it more obvious to the the, you know, the common person that we're in a drought because the reservoirs are, are getting very low. Even Shasta right now is is coming down rapidly. And when people see that, they start to panic. And in that panic, they're they're looking out for like, well, the people have to have the water, and so the fish is going to have to die. And really, that there are other choices right now that you know people are not privy to being a part of, and looking at the water deliveries, and also even the water board having um, basically no power either <laughs> to do anything. You know, we've been working with the water board to just try to do some things and and they really you know they don't have any power against FERC or the Bureau of Reclamation or you know uh, so it's it's a quagmire of of um, painting this picture 
and the actual drought and the actual um, parts about drought. It's like, it's the drought isn't necessarily that the water is not in the lake. The drought is that the water is not on the mountain. You know, making some decisions. Yeah, I know that there's. Sorry, Kathleen. That's right. Yeah. Um, I know that there is some um, people wondering if there might be a, a drought declaration in the Klamath area in Siskiyou County specifically, um, because while um, while a lot of farmers throughout the state are being cut off in the Scott and Shasta rivers and some of the tributaries of the Klamath that produce the most salmon, um, the farmers are trying to make up by, for that by cutting even more alfalfa. Um, and they are already bringing the water levels dangerously low in those river systems. So, and those are the river systems that come into the Klamath right below the dam. So they're really needed to make sure that the salmon survive long enough for those dams to come out. Um, however, I don't know if that's going to happen, and I do know that there are people who are very supportive of the county by county drought declarations. So it sounds like maybe Barry is one of those. <laughs> um, so we do have another question. Um, and I, I did see that someone um, in the chat did uh, there was actually no consultation with local tribes um, in Sonoma County um, and Mendocino County when the drought declaration happened. And I know a lot of people in Humboldt County were really mad about that drought declaration also because the Eel River is diverted into the Russian River. And um, the East Fork of the Russian River it is, no. is not even an actual, isn't even an actual fork. It's actually just Eel River water um, that goes down for power generation. And we're trying to get those dams down too. So people are really mad that, that the way the governor is doing things means there could be more water diverted from the Eel River and those fish could die too. And I know that we were pretty mad out here that he used that drought declaration to advocate for Sites Reservoir to be built because Sites Reservoir would take a lot more water out of the northern watersheds in the state. So, um, and also for voluntary agreements for agriculture regulation, which are not going anywhere. Um, we have one more question and that's, can anyone speak to any specific water or salmon predictions for um, 2021? Um, and it is 2021, and I would say specific, there's not much snowpack at all, um, and the salmon returns are dangerously low. The Klamath, at least for the Klamath, the whole Klamath um, fishing zone in the ocean is completely shut down, and um, tribal members will only be able to fish about one fish per tribal member for the Yurok tribe. I'm not sure what the allocations of the Hoopa Valley tribe look like. Um, someone might be able to drop that in the chat. But um, as Amy said, we're in extreme drought in the Klamath River. Um, I'm not sure if Bear and Pauline have anything to say to specific water and salmon predictions. Just a, just a couple of uh, fleshing out some of the things John uh, mentioned in his presentation. Uh, first, the reason the season is slashed so much um, uh, along the whole coast is to make sure in the Bay Delta system that more than 120,000 fish return to spawn in the, in the Sacramento River system. Um, um, so we think we'll get that, we'll think we will get an adequate number of adult fish returning to the rivers to keep healthy runs going. The problem is, as John mentioned, that because they're draining too much cold water out of Shasta Dam, most of those fish may die and specifically uh, we're actually likely to get some new model runs in the next couple of days, but so far the model runs that have come out of the National Marine Fisheries Service suggest that up to 89% of all of the winter run juveniles and uh, could die this year, which is astonishing. That's a listed species. That's killing 89% of a, a listed species under the Endangered Species Act, and up to and somewhere between 90 and 100% of juvenile naturally spawning Sacramento River. Um, um, uh, fall run Chinook salmon could be killed by lethal temperatures this year. That's a pretty bleak picture. We're pushing hard. We know that it'll, that we will never get a good year, but we're certainly hoping we can push the water board and get better conditions than that. Well, the only thing I need to add to that is that regardless of what the science is, that the rivers must have the salmon to produce more water for everybody. That's the end line. It's like ignoring the, the miner's canary. 
and just keep doing what you're doing and digging the gold and taking it out while the canary is dying, you're next. That's what these salmon are telling us now is that if we don't pay attention to their work in the rivers and the underflow aquifers that they help tap into when they're digging those nests in the river system and making the whole mountain flourish with, with nutrients, then we're ignoring our very source of the water keepers again. It's not the first time, but it might be <laughs> the last time we have a chance to do something better than, um, you know, we can always grow farms again, but you, you know, you make those salmon go extinct and you're not going to have them. So. It's such an important point. And then one thing I would like to mention too, is the relief being offered to a lot of farmers that are losing money this year. And we in California export a lot of crops, especially things like alfalfa and almonds. So you know, if we lose the salmon, it could be forever, but farmers can get relief. And some of the farmers that grow nuts are literally billionaires. So some of them could afford to use a little less water. Um, and I know that the groundwater pumping issue too is a major thing here in the Scott and Shasta rivers. So, um, and I see in the chat that there is some talk about whether or not the state water quality control board. And for people who don't know what that is, that is the controls um, water quality decisions. And it is the agency in California that could actually do something to provide more water into our river systems this year. Um, but there's talk about how they actually lack any kind of political will to use their authority. And that is exactly why we are doing a day of action um, for and we're going to be putting out action alerts all summer long um, because they do not use their authority. I mean, one of the things I bring up to students up here in on the Klamath River and in Hoopa is that our clean Trinity River water goes mainly to lands that are called poison lands, millennium laden, um, laden lands within the Western San Joaquin Valley to grow almonds and then the water runoff from those selenium laden lands are actually go into the San Francisco Bay and into drinking water supplies and chemical runoff also goes into those drinking water supplies. So we're taking the most important resource that could exist, cold, clean water that could um, be there for people and for salmon and we're turning it into toxic pollution that's going into our drinking water supplies for some almonds, you know, and for some other crops that are really not real food crops. So um, it's time for the water board to really look at what their job is. And their job is not to protect farmers. Their job is to protect water quality. Um, unfortunately, Governor Newsom has really been standing in the way of them being able to do the right thing though. And that's why we're really asking for people to call him, to write him letters, to join the day of action, to sign the petitions and to do can share the video asking him to take a stand because it, without our governor actually doing something positive, it's not going to happen. Right now, the governor is stopping any kind of action, like Barry said. Um, so with that, if anyone has any final remarks, then um, that would be great. Um, and I do not, um, I see one comment saying the governor should direct the water board to stop water delivery to Sacramento River settlement contractors and save cold water in the Shasta and Trinity reservoirs. Thank you for that comment. It would really make a huge difference this year. And this year we really do need to be paying attention to every drop of cold water. And those are the coldest water sources I can think of. Um, okay, so with that, if um, Barry or Colleen wanna say anything to help close it up, um, please do follow Save California Salmon. Please do engage in the May 4th day of action. There will be a Delta Tunnels hearing later on that week. Um, we will have that up on our website too, California justice is all action alerts about this issue. Um, California Salmon also has really good information. You can follow the Winnemowintu Tribes Run for Salmon on their website. Um, and I really encourage that. Um, and please help us make sure to finally defeat the Shasta Dam Rays. We have a new Secretary of Interior. And if there was ever a time to finally squash this terrible project, it's now. Um, so those are my final remarks. Thank you all for being here. Um, and Colleen and Barry, it's up to you now. Yeah, I, I would just um, like to reiterate that, you know, um, the farmers are 
80% of the water users and 2% of the economy. And so we have to consider that as the rest of California and the things that are happening here, um, which include everybody needs water. Everybody needs water. But if we don't take care of our water systems, then we're probably not the people who need water because we don't take care of it. That's how the traditions go. You know, they say that if you don't go to the sacred places and pray, they go dormant. They don't listen to you no more. They don't care about you because you don't really care. You're not doing anything. You're not helping. And we should be helping. And, and of course, we, we feel like um, we, we speak for the salmon. And so what happens to them actually will happen to us. You know, I hope people can believe that, you know, that uh, people are not the almighty, the God, uh, God-like behaviors uh, are coming to an end and, and the signals are here now, you know, they've been here um, for 30 years, but we don't want to see it. But I hope that people will um, do more, get more information and get more knowledge about this and have common people stop relying on the state water boards and 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 the water rights of the people who you know made things up as they came and start realizing you know that uh, there is a finite of water and that it's here and we need to do something about it um, also i'd like to invite people to watch the uh, Sawal mem film and there is a link on here um, for that film and it's, uh, it'll be free for everybody who is watching tonight on this program. And hopefully we just get more people thinking about water. Sawal Mem means sacred waters. So thank you very much. Also hope you join Run for Salmon. And I'm smart enough not to try to add anything to Colleen's words. I just thank you all for joining today. Yeah, thank you all so much and um, have a wonderful night. Please participate in the Day of Action and anyone who cannot afford to make meetings about these issues, we do have a fund set up, especially for tribal members um, to travel. Uh, so do keep in touch. My email, a few people have asked, is um, regina at californiasalmon.org. And um, thank you so much and good night, everyone. <laughs>